Mecha Random 42, your favorite YouTube harpy, and we are doing a quick review of Star Trek Discovery. I, I, I had to Google. I can never remember this. Season 2, Episode 5. The episode is called Saints of Imperfection, aka more pretentious bullshit. <laughs> Holy crap. So spoiler or spoilers will there will be full spoilers and I need to issue a trigger warning. If you are brand new to the channel, I am not a fan of Discovery. I love Star Trek. This isn't Star Trek. Whatever the crap they're trying to pass off of Star Trek. Th this is some of this more JJ universe crap. So score. What, what kind of score can I give this episode? I, I think I was thinking maybe about a four out of 10 because some of the acting is actually really, really good in this episode. I know. Shock. I, I actually have something good to say about it. And and when, you know, there, there are moments where I'm, where I'm watching like Anthony Rapp's performance. Total. Like, I, I, I wish he was in Star Trek. You know, I wish he was on the Orville or something. He's actually really good. He would make a really good Star Trek character. This isn't Star Trek, though. This, this is this is some Stranger Things and and Star Wars hybrid that just doesn't work. I, I I don't know how else to describe it. So, the episode starts out. God, yeah, yeah, four out of ten, four out of ten. I gotta give this one because this one actually had moments of me there watching it and being engaged in what's actually going on and not just completely hate watching it. There's some huge things that I had huge issue with in this episode, not gonna lie, but but the episode is, uh, the show's not getting much better. It really isn't. It's not getting any better. <sighs> how, how, how do we start this one? Starts off with we're, we're out there still trying to find Spock because apparently Spock's shuttle can go so much faster than, you know, a starship. I'll, I'll let that sink in. The, the shuttle can go that much faster than a starship in this in this universe. <sighs> I, I wish I wish I make, you know, and, and I, I like I said, I'm a Star Trek fan. OK, I, I got all of them except for Enterprise on DVD. I even, you know, what? You even shout out to Richie Poole and awesome viewers even have season one of Discovery because the collection, you know, I, I collect shit. I, I I consume this stuff. This this is just not good. You know, they, they don't understand basic Star Trek and that's part of the problem. So, so of course we're chasing Spock's ship, and and of course they finally they finally get the shuttle, and lo and behold, Spock's not on it, but Space Hitler is. Only we're not supposed to know she's Space Hitler. There's there's even this moment of hilarity where everybody's surrounding the shuttle. They think it's Spock. They think it's Spock. They've got their their phasers drawn, their little hand phasers. They're and everybody lowers their weapon except Michael Burnham and she lowers it in the worst way like this is this is this this is why I I kind of call out her acting. It is so. It would be like me trying to act in this in this series. She points her phaser at, at um, you know, the shuttle, thinking, okay, it's going to be Spock. Once we figure out it's not Spock and it's 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 Philippa Giorgio, everybody lowers their weapons except Michael Burnham because she knows this is Space Hitler. She knows this is the one from the Mirror Universe that that killed all the Klingons and like all of them, the entire planet. So she leaves her weapon up for a second, and then she does the thing where she she half lowers it and then lowers it all the way. It is so elementary school level of acting I laughed at that I I, sh I showed that on my reaction because I, I had to laugh at that it was so terrible I, I do have a whole live reaction up but I don't recommend watching it um and do if you do watch that one please turn on the ad block because CBS did claim that one as a for copyright because I, I use just a little too much footage and and you know what that's fine whatever I'll probably just leave it up so you guys can see it but it, it, it is such bad juvenile level of acting and at least from her, from her. When Anson mounts on screen, damn good. I'm, I'm engaged. You know, there's even some moments where he actually acts like a captain at a few, few points here. So any, anyway, they, they have this whole, they, they have this whole kind of dialogue with Philippa Giorgio. She, she's, she basically does the, the, <laughs> the stereotypical, oh, I'm an evil person. I'm going to pick up an apple and crunch at the most inappropriate times. It couldn't have been any more hilarious. And I mean, the only thing she was missing is, is like a mustache to twirl and a cat to pet and, and you know, and, and, and having and peeling it with a knife. That could have been easier. That that could have been like the other thing that would have been even more stereotypical is if she were peeling the apple with a, with a knife or cutting it with a knife and eating it off the knife each slice. That would have been funnier, too. 
man, it's the, she is so over the top. She, she reminds me of somebody playing a parody of an over the top evil villain. Like, like somebody, that's what this feels like. It feels like it's a parody of Star Trek. It is that outrageous. And there are so many laugh out loud, funny, unintentionally funny moments in this. I'm kind of in shock. I'm kind of beyond rage at this point because there's so many laugh out loud, funny, unintentionally funny moments in this. So, so of course, we find out that she's working for Section 31, which everybody knows about because they have these little black badges. Seriously, hide, hide some of your secret information, please. Like, if it's a top secret organization, maybe don't tell everybody about it, you know? Everybody knows about the CIA, because it's not a top secret organization. <laughs> and, and, you know, somebody even used that as a, as a in, in the comment section of the video. Well, everybody knows about the CIA. Yeah, there's a difference, though. This The CIA isn't Section 31. Oh, God, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. <laughs> so, so of, of course, now we have to work with the Section 31 ship. There, there's also this, uh, this other plot in this, um, in this thing where, where they have to, where Tilly got, got sucked into this sort of cocoon thing in the last episode after they had to drill a hole in her head to let the let the 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 bitchy girl may out, out you know it's, it's basically a spore that takes on the persona of this bitchy friend that she used to have this girl this actress is so damn bitchy and annoying and abrasive and harsh they could have really picked like a much sweeter actress so then you're maybe more sympathetic to her but man, I, I just want the mycelial network to die. I want everything in that mycelial network to die. Also, they're kind of treating it like it's a pool that you can just kind of dip your feet in. I'm not even kidding. So, so it's kind of become, instead of this sort of subspace, or not, not, not even subspace, a mycelial network like that, that's inside of another sort of plane of existence that they can travel to. Now now it's just, no, it's, it's something that we can just dip the starship in. I'm not, I'm not kidding. They, they have this shot and they keep showing it. They, they, there's this really funny little moment where, where the, the discovery spins because it has that stupid spore drive and, and they have to kind of do a half jump and go half in and half out because that happens and because that would work, right? <laughs> so fucking stupid. So, so they spin around the ship and it kind of plunk, plunks halfway into this mycelial puddle. It's a, it's a pool because... They they have to show these literal things when they're when they're talking about the the kind of how, how do I explain it? I mean the best way I can explain it is it's like another dimension. It's like subspace. You probably wouldn't be able to see it, and and it's kind of a bit of a nitpick. But the way they showed it was kind of hilarious. And also again, everything's blue in this se season. Again, they don't have any other colors other than blue and shades of blue. So it's very depressing to look at. And, and like I said, it's kind of unintentionally hilarious. So, so they have to go in and rescue Tilly out of this this mycelial network for some reason. I don't know why they can't just let her die. I mean, I, ser seriously, your first duty is to your ship, not to, you know, one little stupid crew member who probably shouldn't even be in Starfleet. I liked Tilly until they started really, really making her unlikable, until they kind of started amping up the she might be on the spectrum sort of thing. And, and, and basically what that does is anybody who, who says, oh, I like Tilly because she's so representative, they're making fun of you. They are. They're, they're flat out making fun of people who might be on the spectrum, might be a little awkward, might be a little weird. That's what that whole carpool karaoke thing where they're like, nerds, singing nerds at us, like, like just to mock us, basically. That, that's what it feels like anyway. So it, if, if you guys really think that, you know, you identified with Tilly, I hate to break it to you, but they're kind of making fun of you for it. Oh, what, what else happened in this episode? So, so yeah, they have to go and rescue Tilly. Apparently, all this stuff in the mycelial network is attacking her. It's burning her. Um, also, Dr. Culver is in the mycelial network, or at least his energy that got transferred from a tear that went into Stamets while Stamets was connected to the mycelial network. Would have made a little bit more sense had it been, you know, had they just used their full R rating and gone with, like, any other bodily fluid exchange. I mean, they're a couple. They might have exchanged some bodily fluids at some point. Just saying, you you could have used your R rating there and, and been a little bit less um supernatural, I guess. They, they went a little paranormal in this episode by, by saying, oh, yes, his energy and, and he's just trapped in the mycelial network and he we can pull him out and we can get him back. 
And, and of course, he's like really like Dr. Culber's there. He looks really shaggy and scraggly and scruffy and just very unkempt. He looks really bad because because he's being attacked by the mycelial network. And he basically is kind of acting like a wild animal. So, of course, May had, wants nothing. Oh, she, he's destroying us. He's attacking us. No, he's, he's found a way to kind of protect himself from getting attacked by the mycelial fungus. Seriously, screw these people in the mycelial network. We've also already done this. Didn't we already do this where they had some species that lived in, like, that, that was affected by warp travel? So that's kind of what they're, they're kind of going for, I think, is that this, this species inside the mycelial network, I think they're going to write it out of the show anyway. Because we're going to be damaging this stupid species in there that, like, seriously, light them up, burn them, set them on fire. I hate these mycelial people. They are dicks. Look at May. She's so bitchy. And I just, I just want to punch that character in the face. I hate every moment she's on screen. Hate Tilly for putting up with her. Even Tilly's snapping at her. It, it is so stupid. Like, like so, so the spore that went into Tilly and became May. Yeah, this is like a whole season arc. So, so watch all my other reviews. If you have no idea what's going on, I'm assuming you guys have watched the rest of this. The, the spore that landed on Tilly last season went into her mind to create this person that she used to know when she was in junior high. But all of a sudden, this person can't, like, doesn't know what tears are. And that's how we knew it wasn't really the friend. And, and now they don't know what pinky swearing is. Yes, they, they go out of their way to show a pinky swear in this episode. <laughs> Because the, this this spore that has access to all of Tilly's brain and memories would would you know just doesn't know what a pinky swear is. There there's so many inconsistencies with how these these things are like like if if you're using like a major plot point like oh she she doesn't know what tears are, don't make the creature something that can have access to everything inside of your head. That's just bad writing. That's just stupid, right? That that's a whole level of stupid that. That people are going to call you out on Star Trek fans and Star Trek viewers usually are very, very intelligent people until the JJ universe came along and decided it wants to be more special effects, explosions, action. And, and you, you get this whole demographic of people who come in and watch Star Trek who don't know Star Trek, who aren't cerebral, who, who don't pay attention to this. And then they hate you because they, because you're pointing out all of the flaws in something. It's like, oh, don't rain on my parade. I, I don't, you're ruining my enjoyment of it. Get out of my fandom again. Get out of the fandom because Star Trek is is not supposed to be this. And and of course, yes, I know this is all more of that JJ universe crap that we're getting because of the whole ca canon versus Kelvin versus Prime stuff. Canon is the TV Trek. Um, Kelvin is of course Cal Prime is something that came out of the Kelvin universe. Go watch Midnight's Edge's videos on that. They, they've done a huge, great job explaining it. And, and you, if you guys are on my channel, you probably already know. I'm, I'm not going to keep going and, and beating a dead horse with that one. The other stupid thing in this episode. Oh, the other stupid thing. So, so they, they, I guess the Discovery is going to, like, needs help. They need to be towed out. So they have this Section 31 ship that everybody knows about, just ready to kind of help and get them out of the, the mycelial thing. Even though they're also out there trying to find Spock, they've got all the they've got like the the season arc. Of course, and spoiler, Spock isn't in this one either. They're probably gonna t uh, bring him in like the last episode or something. Yeah, it, it's it's so convoluted. So so yeah, they have the Section Thirty One ship. Ash Tyler is back as as the liaison, and and of course because there's only like thirty people in the entire galaxy that they could possibly utilize for for this. I mean, I guess it sort of makes sense because he's sort of familiar with the crew and would be a liaison to Section Thirty One. But seriously, you're not supposed to know that Section Thirty One exists, but everybody fucking knows that Section Thirty One exists. And then we get to the part that really made me almost stop watching the episode. He, he, Ash Tyler's on the bridge. He's got his Section 31 black badge. Boop, communicator now. I'm not joking. There are communicators in this guy. It was bad enough with the episode with the, the translator try, trying to, tr trying to basically forget how people used to communicate and how, how people used to use translation and you, you used to be able to use your, your flip out communicator to translate. Well, not in this universe. They don't do that because remember, this isn't in our Star Trek continuity. This isn't in canon. This is in its own thing. And we'll probably line out and tie into the JJ movies, but 
He has he has a com badge. And and he and it even makes the bloop, bloop, little com badge noise. Ash Tyler does. And, and of course, at, at least they gave Anson Mount the line of what the hell kind of communicator is that or or whatever the line was. <sighs> Yeah, that, that's, what, that's what really lost me. There are so many things to nitpick about this episode, but that was the biggest insult is the communicator. I'm probably going to do a whole video on that communicator at some point. Holy shit, was it bad? <laughs> it was so bad. I, I hate seeing that. And, and you know what? Yes, you're, you're, yes, I have people in the comments saying, but, but we have technology now from the government. The, go the super, super secret government stuff had technology that was more advanced that we're now getting. Right, but here's the thing, that super secret organization, Section 31, no one should know about at all, at all. It well, wasn't even brought up until Deep Space Nine and Enterprise. Of course, Enterprise had another a huge flaw with it being a prequel again. But seriously, you're, you're supposed to kind of give us some little... <sighs> I'm sure they thought, oh, we're going we're gonna to bring in a communicator. This is going to be cool. This is going to be great. This is going to help fix a lot of issues with canon and, and the 25% the different stuff. And, and it'll be a good little nod to the geeks who won't get that they didn't have them then. It's insulting. That's, that's, what, that's, uh, that's just another thing that they shouldn't have. Just like the view screens, holograms, all of these things that they shouldn't have. So so yeah so so the, the section thirty one ship tractor beams them out of of the mycelial pool because you can just do that apparently you can just pull them out of it it's so stupid and and, and of course Doctor Culber can't come through the the can't come through the little portal he's got to go back through the cocoon because he was made of stuff from the the mycelial universe even though it's his energy so it's kind of him but it's not and then he goes in the cocoon then they end up pulling him out of the cocoon or something and and he's basically there naked on the floor like terminator why wasn't tilly naked when she went into the mycelial network we got robbed man we, we really got robbed to seeing mary weissman naked because she's a cutie she's really adorable she can't help how bad the show's written. These people can't help how... There were some great little moments between Stamets and, and Dr. Culber, even. I'm like, you know, this could work in actual stuff. I, I feel so bad for the people on the show having to deal with this, this crap that they're given. Because when they get something decent... Like, Anthony Rapp's a damn good actor on this. I keep saying that... You know, Sonequa uh, uh, Martin-Green is not doing very well, but I think she just doesn't understand how to play the character. The directors don't know what they're doing. And the writing's bad. So I, I think it's a, a huge combination of that. And to me, she really feels like she would be a day player, a guest star. She's not... She's not lead material. She's not carrying the show. If the show were all based around Stamets, it probably would be better. Stamets and Tilly, that would be a much better show. The less Michael Burnham is on screen, the better the show is. <sighs> what what else happened? I I, th I think that I think we went over pretty much every major plot point and everything that I hated about this episode and everything I liked about the episode. And for everybody who says, "Oh, you're just negative all the time," no, you just only hear the negatives. That's kind of how we are. Pe people come to my channel thinking I'm just all negative. What did you guys think of this episode? Did you watch live with me last night? It's oh god, I. <sighs> I just don't have words anymore. Like I said, this has some laugh out loud, hilarious, unintentionally hilarious moments. And, and you know, I got to give it maybe a four out of ten. It, 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 it kind of reminds me of a bad Voyager episode, you know, and, and when we have basically the level of writing that it's, it's a bad Voyager episode and that's kind of one of your better discovery episodes. You got a huge problem here. You really got to step it up. And, and like I said, there, there's so much stuff. That my, my, they're treating that mycelial network kind of thing as as like it's the underground or the upside down from Stranger Things or whatever. It's, it's just so bad. They, they just keep ripping off other stuff. And please, can we stop using the plagiarism drive already? Just enough with the, the spore drive. I'm tired of it. What did you guys think of this episode? <laughs> did you watch it? Are, are we still watching? Are we just hate watching now? Or are we watching just to laugh at it? Because I'm kind of watching it to laugh at now. But um, I'm trying to get whatever entertainment I can out of it. And it's it's it makes it more enjoyable watching it live with you guys on midnight, the night it airs. Uh, midnight Mountain Time is when we do the live show. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, you can send your angry letters to Mega Random 42 at P.O. Box 1566, Loveland, Colorado, 80539. I will be doing a birthday live stream February 16th, Saturday, sometime in the evening. 
central mountain time, something like that, probably early evening. Hopefully it's not too super late for, for the people in the UK kind of stumbling in at 2 a.m. Or, or midnight or something. I'll try and keep it around there for you guys. And I will see you guys on the next video or, or live stream. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye!